well good morning um, or if you're watching this in the evening good evening um, welcome back to another week on my allotment and there's no spectacular sunrise this morning it's a proper grey miserable drake as the Scottish say uh, winter morning even though we're into March the weather's just reminding us that we're not into spring proper yet um, so yeah it's really bitterly cold the wind is foul, there's drizzle in the air, <laughs> it's proper miserable. However, um, the fire's on, I've made my first brew, um, and just to give you an idea of how, um, how little I've got to do, um, I put the hat on my little scarecrow uh, when I turn up here, and I put it away when I leave. Um, but when I forget, I leave it on there, and it always ends up blowing somewhere. It fall, you know, gets knocked off by the wind, and it ends up sat in the mud and the wet. So the other day, I sat for 20 minutes and threaded uh, a chin strap onto the hat, and now it stays on. That's how little I've got to do on the plot. So <laughs> I'm not sure what this video is going to contain. I'm sure we'll find something. However, first thing I'd like to say is uh, happy birthday to Helen from Bristol Veggie Beds. Uh, one of my subscribers. I hope you had a great day. Um, and I have got a couple of jobs actually. One of them, and neither of them are to do with growing fruits and vegetables. Um, the uh, One of the glass panes on my cold frames was broken by Lizzie's golf ball, the dipstick. Um, so much for the net. Um, and so it's been sh sat there with shattered glass uh, all winter. And I do have a spare one. That they were given to me, they're old sash window panes from Bridget. I, God knows where she got them, but they're on her old um, allotment when she gave it up. And she gave me a few, so I've got a spare, thankfully. Um, so I've got to fix that. And the, the white paint that I did last winter, uh, redid it, that needs redoing. So I'm going to rub that down. And I haven't got the paint with me, but um, I'll rub it down in preparation. Um, so again, you know, it's a niff naff and trivia job. And the other one is the Enviromesh that I use to cover my brassicas. If I didn't have Enviromesh over my brassicas, they'd be gone. Um, that's got a few holes in it. One year I put it away somewhere in one of my Daleks or whatever, and the mice obviously got to it and nibbled some holes in it. And inevitably, you know, I try and block those holes up. But um, the, the white cabbage white butterfly gets in. So whenever I turn up on the plot last summer, there were cabbage whites inside my environment. Well, that's no good. So I brought a needle and thread with me today. <laughs> how domesticated am I? And I'm going to attempt to sew up the little holes. We'll see how, you know, I'll see how that gets on. It's one of those horrible jobs, horrible, um, that you don't want to do, but it's at the back of your mind and, you know, we're getting towards spring and it's no good pulling that out. I mean, it might have been nibbled a bit more by the mice. We'll see. So that's another job I've got to do. And then uh, the other thing I do this time of the year, we are having a lot of rain, um, is I use that bent fork tool that I've got and I just agitate the surface of the soil. It's not digging, um, it's just agitating it to loosen it up, get, get it more crumbly. And my theory is that with the wind and a little bit of dry weather, if and when we get it, that just dries the surface out and warms it a little. Um, anyway, that's my theory. It's a very another boring job, but you know there's a lot of boring work on allotments. It's not all thrills and spills. Um, so yeah, welcome along. Uh, welcome to the new subscribers I seem to have managed to get recently. Um, you're very welcome. Well, I've made a few improvements and made it a little neat and tidier since I last took you around the plot. And this is what I mean, this bed here, this is what I've done, I've just broken up the surface and, and it is drying out. Um, these old bits of uh, plastic corrugated sheet, um, I dug up some uh, strawberries that had grown wild in beds I didn't want. So I've put them in there and I've put that over them, um, hoping, you know, it's just a hope, that it might produce some early strawberries. We shall see. It's not taking up that much ground. Um, and those two beds from from this sort of division with the soil there, 
and there, that's all onions. Um, the rhubarb's looking fantastic. Um, yeah, I, I spoke to Terry. Terry gave me this rhubarb. <laughs> and I spoke to him about a month ago. He says, I'd really like some rhubarb. I says, you gave me this. Um, so I said to him, he can have this, this one here on the end. I mean, I've got three plants there and this fourth one. Um, I think the fourth one is just greedy. So I've, I've said to Terry, you can come and dig that up. But he hasn't yet. And oddly, you see just there, um, I've got a rhubarb plant coming up. I must, it, you know, I must have done that when I was digging or I don't know. But I've ended up with a small rhubarb plant coming up where I don't want it. But I haven't got the heart to dig it out. It's food. Anyway, and these two beds again have been uh, surface agitated. Um, and, you know, talking of things coming up in odd places, um, some little tete-a-tete -tete daffodils. Um, I didn't put them there. Anyway, they're beautiful and they can stay. Um, moving through. I said I put these two uh, roses in and hope for the best. They came from the garden when I moved the tool shed. Well, they're sprouting, thrilled to bits. And these three tubs that I put some tulip bulbs in, uh, again, one of my customers kindly gave me. Three is a bit odd, you know, I like, I'd like the symmetry of one over there, but I only got three of these tubs, so, um, you know, so be it. And, and the larger tubs, I've only got five, so I need another one to make that symmetrical, but is that just me? And yeah, the rest of the beds um, will go up this way to try and avoid the wind. Um, I don't remember putting those daffs in, but I must have done. Um, some more onions in that bed there. Um, no sign of the asparagus sticking its head out yet, but it's probably a bit early, isn't it? Um, yeah, not a lot else to show you, really. Uh, I Back at the greenhouse, myself and my charming little granddaughter, Lexi, planted my own seeds of peeledman in a piece of five foot long guttering yesterday. Um, so I'm fingers crossed that they germinate. I've never saved my own pea seeds before, so we'll see. Um, but yeah, uh, it, it's all looking very neat and tidy. I think this uh, gooseberry bed could probably do with a little bit of a hoe. Um, but as we stand, everything's painted. Everything's in its place. Again, I don't remember putting these dafts and primroses in, but uh, all the snowdrops. Uh, but it all looks good. Um, and I've got some nettles coming up, and I don't mind that. And, you know, the nettles are needed by things to, to lay their eggs in. And I like this pond to go a little bit wild and unkept. And again, talking of having nothing to do, I've, these little daffodils were again sprouting up in the beds so I thought I know what I'll do with them um, so I've moved them into these and they can stay in there I'll plant these up with calendulas in the summer but the bulbs can stay in and hopefully will come up again next year the broad beans are looking good lots of flowers setting I can't begin to tell you how lovely it is in that shed I'm going to find it really difficult to come outside here today and do any work. But this is the project for today. Um, you can see that's cracked there. Here's the spare one. So I've got to remove that frame, sort out the glass, take it home and get rid of it. Rub this one down, rub that one down and put it there. And it is bitterly cold. And I think this little bit of um, blackberry is a legacy of when I used to have another shelter there before the shed was put in. And it, it's so stubborn, it just keeps growing and it's set in flowers. So um, I'm going to leave it, I think. I've cut it down before. And the really good news on the plot is my kiwi plant that I put here uh, last autumn. 
has now got some buds on it. It's springing back to life. So, oh, I can hear the fire crackling. It's calling to me. Yeah, as we stand, uh, the plot is very brown, but it's all in good working order. Um, and uh, as I've said previously, all the main seed germination and sowing is going on back home on windowsills I'm allowed to use and in the greenhouse. And to finish off the full tour, um, out the back here, really happy with how this all looks, all very neat and tidy. I've sat on the bench a few times now, when, depending on the direction of the wind it's quite sheltered and it is a lovely view up the hill. So yeah, very happy with everything looking. Right, I've got to get back in that shed and warm my hands up. Okay, so that's the glass replaced um, and they're rubbed down. I just need to bring the paint up on a better, warmer, drier day to paint them, but that will make quite a difference. They'll really lift up and out when I've got them painted in contrast to the green. So, yeah, very happy. And the uh, geraniums in those pots which have overwintered under there just given those a drink and put in it some of my um, comfrey feed to try and lift them and bring them on and start them up into life ready for the spring when they can come out of there so yeah one of the jobs ticked off um, not wishing to upset 50% of my audience but I have some interesting facts here uh, regarding the fairer sex uh, some of them are biological, some of them are social, some of them are serious, some of them aren't. But I hope you find them interesting. And for the sake of my channel, I'm not going to comment on them. <laughs> I might laugh occasionally. Women are biologically sensitive to high-pitched noises, so they can hear their offspring even when they're asleep. Women take less risks than men due to a part of their brain the angular cingulate cortex being bigger. Men and women's clothes are buttoned on different sides because in recent history men generally dressed themselves whereas women were dressed by maids. Reversing the buttons on women's clothing made the task easier. In the US women on benefits have three times more children than women not on benefits. 
that's a really interesting statement about the welfare system, isn't it? And I'm sure that's not unique to the US either. The outspoken feminist Camille Paglia has actually been a strong critic of modern feminism, stating that, and I quote, this isn't me, <laughs> feminism has become a catch-all vegetable drawer where bunches of clingy sob sisters can store their mouldy neurosis. <laughs> End quote. Get hold of that. Of the 20 richest women in the world, all of them, bar one, inherited their money from their husbands or fathers. I'm saying nothing. Women are twice as likely to initiate a suicide attempt, but men are four times more likely to succeed. <laughs> I know the next one because I'm married. Women talk more than men. <laughs> No, really? Studies have determined that on average women use 13,000 more words a day than men. There, like I say, wasn't designed to upset. <laughs> but yeah, I find those fascinating and quite a few of them uh, humorous. So, I've got to turn that from a hole into, into that. And let me tell you, that was harder than I thought. Whether it will hold up when I tension it over the crops remains to be seen. But I've got about another 10 to do. Well, I've done one hole <laughs> in that netting. Oh, it's a mind-numbing job, but, you know, it's, it, I will reap tangible benefits, I hope. So I thought I'd come in, I've got a coffee, I'd have a break. And I thought, as I've upset all the ladies, <laughs> I'd, I'd do a few more facts about unrelated matters to the fairer sex. Um, and like I say, next time I will um, do some interesting facts about the male of our species. So, um, I'll, I'll do a few facts from the QI book. Sea slugs prefer to eat an animal that has just eaten another animal. So they get two meals in one. Well, that makes sense, doesn't it? The UK's food supply chain means we are only ever nine meals away from empty supermarket shelves. See, I, I do believe, on a serious note, that there is benefit in becoming more resilient and by that I mean you know having food stocks that mean the next time you know somebody whispers empty shelves and the whole country panics as it does nowadays everyone's walking around with these keep calm t-shirts on while they panic um, you know we've got four freezers at home full of our own produce so you know we're 90 meals away all right they may not be the most um, interesting meals if we had to rely on frozen fruit and veg but we'd be fine. Some bacteria are not only resistant to antibiotics they enjoy eating them. The Korowai people of New Guinea put grubs in their ears to eat their earwax. <laughs> I can only imagine what that feels like. You know when someone sticks their finger in your ear it's really irritating Imagine actually putting it, oh. People suffering from the plague 
may not enter a library in the UK. Well, that makes perfect sense to me. The Queen is a fee-paying member of the Jigsaw Puzzle Library. The Queen owns a treadmill that 18 horses can use at the same time. The, tree, the Christmas Tree Grower Council of Europe holds its Christmas party in June. In the, this is an interesting one. In the last 300 years, the average size of a wine glass has increased sevenfold. I feel sorry for those people living 300 years ago. Jeff Goldblum puts orange juice on his cereal. The Pope drives a blue Ford Focus. Eating ice cream for breakfast can increase mental alertness. And a really sad one to end on, which is a sad indictment of the British education system. One in five Britons cannot name a single author of literature. Wow. <laughs> and I bet three in five that can would name J.K. Rowling. <laughs> Yes, quite interesting. So now my cup of coffee and back to sewing. I bet you've never seen sewing on an allotment. I've had a really productive day. Um, all the beds now are um, I've had their, the tops um, raked and that tilth on them that I mentioned and actually um, it's been a largely dry day it's a very bitter cold wind um, but that wind is having an effect on the soil and already there are dry patches appearing. Um, so yeah that's good. Um, I've got some blood, fish and bone um, powder in the tool shed and I've been around the whole plot and I've top dressed all the fruit, uh, the gooseberries, the raspberries, the blackberries, all of that um, with that fertiliser and um, give it a bit of a start in the spring. Um, so um, yeah, productive day. Um, I've, I've sanded down and sorted the uh, cold frames, you saw that. Um, I repaired that piece of Envaramesh, that's now good to go, I'm pleased with that. It's a boring job but it needed doing. Um, and Cheryl brought me lunch and we had a nice hour up here together, which is quite rare uh, on the plot. Um, so yeah, really good day. Um, if there's any ladies still watching, <laughs> 
I hope my little uh, interesting facts didn't upset you too much. Um, and I'll, I'll do the same to the fellas um, next time. So, thanks for watching. Thanks to all those who've subscribed. I appreciate it. Um, <laughs> I might have a few less next time. And uh, all being well, I shall see you next week. So, take care. Look after yourselves. Bye for now.